remote access. What we're all doing on a daily basis, I know when I'm out of pocket and I'm at my day job and I have all my stuff from YouTube and other things and other businesses over here in this rack, I need access to that. And if you have your own business or you have your own home server, accessing it remotely is key. So today we're going over a Synology network attached storage. And if you're not familiar with that, it does a lot more than just store your files. It will do Dropbox replacement. It'll do VPN networks. So if you need to VPN in and you want to secure a line, you can do that. It will do a whole host of different things. Even if you don't want to connect physically, you can just log in via web. So with all that, let's get on the desktop and start exploring this box back here. Because if you're not familiar with Synology, uh, I've had this box for over a year. This little black box behind here in the rack can be put anywhere. And with five hard disks, and this is a bare bones model, it's only about a $600 model, I can host up to 70 terabytes with 14 terabyte drives running a rate of five. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. But if you need more than that, let's say 70 terabytes is just too small for you. They have bigger options as well, and even smaller options for those home users that maybe just want to do a Plex server. So let's get on the desktop and start exploring this Synology network attached storage. So the first thing I do in the Synology box, and I've done an entire setup video, so I'm not going to bore you with setting up the storage. I just want to show you the access and the files and the features of this. So I use Synology Drive here. Synology Drive, you can see the web-based tool. You can log in and get the web-based, but obviously we don't care about that. We want our file explorer. And I have this, if you're on Linux, you can easily sync it up. If you're on Windows, it has Synology Drive on Windows. And if you're on Mac, it also has a client there. So no matter your file system, it just syncs it up, gives you a nice green check mark. And if you add a file, let's say, let's add a little new document here and we'll come back here. You'll see how quickly this thing syncs. I have never had a sync issue in the entire year I've been using or actually more than a year. And I've used this for big business with millions of documents and I still haven't had an issue because the back end of Synology actually runs Linux server and the file system they use is BetterFS, which is both fantastic technologies and it shows. So I'm going to actually get rid of this and you'll see how quickly this thing syncs up. And this is across a whole bunch of machines. I have more than five PCs here, all running Synology Drive. So it's imperative this works perfectly as when I'm making videos, I want to just pop right in here, do it. And I go, oh, you know what? I'm tired of being in this little tiny studio. I want to edit my videos inside. I walk in and there it is. Drive has already sunk up that entire file for me. So if it's a, a gigabyte, typically by the time I finish and hit stop recording, walk in, it's done or even even larger than that. I think I've gone up to uh, over a terabyte of storage on a sync before. And as long as there's enough local storage, it would sync it just fine. So uh, truly amazing. Don't waste your money with a lot of the drop boxes and uh, other like OneDrive and that type of thing. I, I couldn't imagine using that when I have Synology Drive right here and I can easily hit it. Uh, I've even done like a little tiny drop box in here to where I actually pulled in my existing Dropbox, and then I just deleted it off of uh, the Dropbox server. I just hadn't gotten rid of the folder yet. So that's Synology Drive, but it does more than that. Let's talk about remote work. Accessing files and things on Synology is paramount. Logging into the web GUI is probably the biggest thing to just access your files. You can, you can actually get any of your files, any of your shares, anything directly from the web. And setting that up remotely couldn't be easier. Let's go to control panel. And in the connectivity section, you'll see something called quick access. Now I'm kind of a nerd, <laughs> if you didn't know. So I didn't set it up with quick connect because they just kind of do it all for you. So let, let me demonstrate how easy it is for those that aren't technical setting up remote access. We just hit enable quick connect. Uh, we're gonna name it your mama. And we're gonna say accept and apply. Now this will make our own little web page and we can log into this and be able to use this anywhere. So if I walk out of this room, I didn't have to set up firewall rules. I didn't have to set up anything. It just kind of did it all for me. So we'll connect up to this and there we are. It actually redirected everything locally. But if I was on an exterior network, 
it would easily access it using quickconnect.to forward slash yo mama. And there you go. You'd be able to access it easily. Obviously, I don't want to do it that way. I want to do it the old school way with port forwards and other fun gadgetry that I like to do. So when it comes to external access, let me show you the next part when it comes to the Synology box. Now in the external access here under router configuration, if you have a universal plug and play router, which most people do, it's just called UPnP. If that's enabled, as you add these in, if you hit setup router, it'll add those rules automatically into your router. I'm using something a little more industrial uh, back here. I'm using a Ubiquiti USG firewall, which does not support this feature, but that's okay. I easily just add in a traditional port forward and add the, the things I want to share. You'll see the Synology drive. Obviously, I, I want access to that. A VPN server, which if you see, they have a built-in one. They support PPTP, OpenVPN, and L2TP. Obviously, you want OpenVPN. You, you don't want those other two old school ones. OpenVPN is a lot better. And actually, OpenVPN is actually pretty old at this point as well. I have seen some trial packages with the, some of Synology community packages going over WireGuard, but that's a video for another day. Needless to say, OpenVPN's tried and true. Everyone knows it. You'd easily set up an OpenVPN connection. Just coming down to OpenVPN, enabling the server, and then changing this. Usually this is 1194. I changed it to 1199 just to be different, I suppose. But you most, most people would leave it this way. You'd set all this up. Most of the default settings are already there for you. So all you have to do is enable it, hit apply, and then hit export configuration. Save this zip file. And then wherever you go, if you want to connect to this VPN and be on your home network, not necessarily just connect to this for files, but let's say you wanted to establish a VPN server and then do a remote desktop session to your work PC or your home PC, because this is at your home, you could. They also have a, a very extensive knowledge base from Synology. If you look in here, it shows you and walks you through everything that you possibly could want to know. I've never had an issue with any of their white papers or documentation. It's very thorough. I've hadn't got even need to go to a third party website to get anything that I needed as everything was just kind of laid out there. Most instances, you don't even need these, but they're there just in case you want to go into a deep dive and really uh, change some things around with it. Needless to say, I, I've done the VPN management UI and then the custom port, which is, uh, well, that's just Plex right there. So uh, I'm routing uh, these ports directly in so I can do movies on the go with my mobile phone. And speaking of mobile phones, Synology also has all of their apps in here when it comes to Synology Drive. I access that. Uh, I even access the shared web GUI using my mobile phone. Very easy. So just know when you're on the go and maybe you don't have that, or maybe you only have an iPad and you just need that one file and you're in a remote place, you can access it on the go. When it comes to the Synology box here, I am immensely happy. I can't tell you how much I love this box. If you want me to go into greater detail in any part of this, I've done backup videos with it. I've done storage setup videos. I've even done an iSCSI complete virtualized environment for those real big nerds that have their entire uh, rack like this with the custom servers in it that they want to use it as virtualization hosts. This thing goes from absolute beginner all the way to expert and I couldn't be happier with it. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. I love reading them. I'm sure you all have had fantastic experiences with Synology as it's probably the number one storage provider in the market. And I'm just very, very happy to get my hands on one of these boxes. And I just can't wait to see what happens and what they do in the future. But with that said, let me know your thoughts and I'll see you in the next one.